Okay, so hello and welcome back. Uh, we recently did a video talking about the Enshrouded roadmap for 2024 and uh, people seemed to enjoy it. We had a bit of interaction in the comments and stuff like that. People suggesting things and talking about what they're most excited for within the roadmap. So we thought we'd do a little follow-up on things that we'd like to see that weren't in the roadmap. Uh, it won't be a hugely sensical video in terms of the order in which we're going to talk about things, but uh, we're just going to try and get through a load of things that we want to talk about. And hopefully you guys will have some opinions to uh, to share with us. Yes, we've been getting very excited since the roadmap came out. And um, honestly, most of the things that were listed were things that we wanted to be in the game. But like, I think we've all been thinking about our own little things that we'd like to see implemented. Um, they're not necessarily things that would make for good changes. And I'm sure people will let us know why and if they think it's a bad idea. But we'll see how we go. Yeah, it's just fun to throw things at the wall, isn't it, and see what sticks. So let's start with, completely randomly, uh, one thing I'd like to see, uh, obviously in our main playthrough of the game, I did a lot of magic, that was my main build, so I'd like to see some more magic and varied magic. I'd like to see maybe some nature spells, maybe some vines that grab enemies or push them or pull them. Uh, some kind of void magic with a portal that sucks things into uh, into a big portal. Ooh. And yeah, I think that'd be interesting. Just building on what's already there, I think would be fun. So to our knowledge, do we have fire, frost and lightning? Is that it so far? Fire, frost, lightning and healing are the four. A healing, yeah. But as far as like offensive magic. Yeah, it's just those three, I believe. Okay. No, I agree. I think that would be cool. Uh, do you think they could potentially add more branches to the skill tree? Yes, I think. I mean, I think that will come anyway. I definitely think they'll build on the skill tree. I mean, it's already a pretty extensive skill tree. Um, when you first load into the game, there's a lot of stuff. But I think they'll definitely build on that. Um, you know, it, they have branches for ice magic and the other elemental stuff. So having specific branches for nature magic or for void magic or even for summoning. Yeah. Sure. I mean, the nature magic and the summoning, to be fair, do you think they could somehow tie into the um, the branch on the skill tree that allows you to like fight alongside the VUCA and the wild animals and stuff? Yeah, the Beastmaster stuff. Yeah, yeah I definitely think that could that could all link in with each other. Yeah, that'd I'd be a very that. interesting thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, to, to sort of um, carry on from that, I would like to see, and again, I don't know if they would implement this realistically, but... Um, some kind of like gear enchantments i think could be really fun mm. yeah um yeah. so i i don't know exactly how you would do it but obviously you'd have your sort of set stats on gear pieces and then you could potentially use certain materials whatever they may be to um add enchantments onto the gear so be that certain kinds of like like you were saying certain kinds of magic right yeah fire frost lightning the void whatever you wanted to introduce i think that'd be really cool especially for like melee weapons um, yeah absolutely certainly like gear enchantments i think would be good i mean not even necessarily just weapons like enchanting armor to be better at a certain kind of defense um you know having fire resistant armor or ice resistant armor and stuff like that i think would be really interesting yes and i think especially because like i think we briefly touched on this in the last video sometimes you'll get a new gear piece and it's considerably better than what you currently have but you you don't like the look of it right yeah and like when we just before we did the the wyvern boss um i think i crafted the tank set it's like the bronze armor and I was debating between like that and another one, but I liked the look of the tank set more, but there were certain perks on the others and I was like, ah, but I also didn't want to mismatch because I wanted my character to look a certain way. So being able to essentially take a perk from a certain kind of gear piece and, you know, implement that into a piece that I like the look of more would be quite cool. Yeah, just giving the players more freedom, I think is always a good thing. More options to choose from and stuff like that. Yeah, man. Um, sort of leading on from that, I suppose. You're obviously talking about using certain things to enchant um, your gear. Um, I suppose you could add new like minerals and stuff. So, you know, you could add gold and silver. See, that in my eyes 
would be more so gold and silver specifically would be more aimed towards more customization adding trims onto armor maybe just for vanity reasons oh, oh, oh. I yeah think that'd I mean, be really interesting well they did mention on the roadmap a vanity system yeah so that could definitely link into that uh, potentially yeah i would love to see that um i think i do think one of the best parts of enshrouded is just mining and digging mm. um and i think currently we only have uh to my knowledge, copper and tin that we can mine. There's definitely not loads, yeah. There's not, in terms of like ores, I mean. And Can you think of, go on. I was going to say, you could potentially add like um, sort of gemstones, right? Like sapphire, uh, yeah. ruby. And that would work so well with enchantments, right? Yeah, man. So, th right. So think uh, amethyst, for example. You mine a bunch of amethyst and you take it to the blacksmith and there's a certain like sword that you want to make for example and you're like cool let's uh, add this amethyst onto the gear and you come away with like a void enchantment or something yeah yeah that's actually such a good idea you know if you wanted to take it further you could have like a little amethyst gem on the pommel of the sword yes oh and again i don't i don't think that's going to happen i don't think it's necessary it's just me getting excited but you can visualize it right and it'd be quite cool yeah no that's such a good idea i think if if there's going to be any sort of enchantment system that requires an item to enchant i think gems is definitely the way to go yes for sure and uh just just quickly as well if they are adding like new dungeons and like these instance dungeons they talked about they could potentially have a a bunch of new enemies and bosses that resist certain things and are vulnerable to certain things like different kinds of elements yeah um so it'd give you more incentive to craft a few different kinds of weapons and things like that yeah and just building on what's already there i suppose yeah um, building on the game that's already present yeah yeah so just sort of looping back a little bit back towards this sort of vanity stuff that we were talking about um one thing i'd really like to see is just more character customization options in general so that goes from anything from you know when you're first creating your character um more hairstyles um the ability to choose from more hair colors like i would have loved to have had a purple beard um mm -hmm. on my character that would have been really nice even having dyes after you've created your character what i'd accept um yeah, yeah different beards different body types i think that'd be really cool yeah and i feel like that would be quite easy to implement as well you would imagine so do you think they could potentially implement something that allows you to change that mid-game? Yeah, that's an interesting idea, actually. Yeah, I, I being able to... Yeah, because I suppose you'd want... I always go back to sort of like I did in, in the previous video. A big part of what I like about these games is is the role-playing aspect, like imagining you're in that world and being mm -hmm. really imaginative with it. So being able to change you know, your beard length and imagine, you know, say you start your game clean-shaven, and later on, you've got this big long beard because you've been through all this stuff and <laughs> um, little role play aspects like that. But I'm not sure. Do you have any ideas? Um, so I, I have something in mind. I think it may be in The Sims where. Interesting. You can, <laughs> I don't think it's exclusive to The Sims, but I, I'm pretty sure in The Sims you can like pop a wardrobe down, interact with the wardrobe, and that's how you change your like clothes and stuff, right? Actually, that wouldn't make that wouldn't make any sense, would it? If we're talking about hairstyles and beards, why would you interact with a wardrobe to do that? Do you know what, mate? I've got it. You've got it. So we've got magic chests, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. What What about a magic mirror? Oh, a magic imagine, mirror. Imagine Imagine building one of those, plonking it on your wall, and you can go up to it. Maybe you have to spend some kind of resource in order to change your appearance. I think. I think that'd be worth it because it'd make you want to work towards being able to do that. But though later in later in game, you'd be able to just do it as and when. Like shroud cores, for example, you could spend. You go up to the magic mirror, spend a few shroud cores, and you can just gut your character and 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 rejig them however you want them to be. That makes a lot of sense, man. To be fair, you could um you could give it the same kind of aesthetic as the magic chest too, like the the blue, like the luminous kind of glow around it. Yeah, I think that would look really good. Yeah, I like that. Some Snow White type shit. I'm into it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so just another quick one. Um, they obviously announced musical instruments, right? Yes. 
which again leads leans more into the RPG sort of aspects of the game, and it's just a fun mm. thing to play around with and like interact with your friends and stuff. So, to lead on from that, uh, I'd say emotes would be a good idea. Emotes would be fantastic. So there's obviously sitting, which fair enough serves its own mechanical purpose in the game, but mm -hmm. I think th there's there's the sky's the limit with emotes, isn't it? Like I think any sort of open world survival game, especially multiplayer ones, all have some kind of emote wheel or something like that you know yeah. pointing or waving dancing yeah exactly um i mean personally i'd love to be able to just introduce my videos with a little wave to the camera you know just yeah little, that little would certainly help like that. yeah it'd certainly help for content creation i think so talking about content creation um one thing that i think would be really helpful for us considering the series that we that we've made um I would love to see, and I think I've seen a few other people suggest this as well. I want to see the at least the option to make the name over the player in game your character name as opposed to your player name, like your gamer tag. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, that would be incredible. I think I think that'd be much better for role playing purposes. Um, you know, me and you have had a few ideas uh, of things that we wanted to implement in the series or show off that that we weren't. That, that would have been a bit more of a ball ache um, mm -hmm. than they could have been. Especially, for example, if you started like a brand new run with a few friends, um, you could really lean into the role playing aspect, which again, lo a lot of people love to do. You could all come up with names for your characters. And a big part of doing that, as you say, would be having that name above your character rather than just like Ben, Sean, yeah. whatever. Uh, so. This one is probably my biggest want from the game. Ah. Um, so I'll preface this with I understand why it's not in the game yet and I would understand why they don't necessarily want it in the game yet, especially considering it's in early access. But I want a creative mode. Like, I, the building system is so groundbreaking that it's... I just want to be able to sit with infinite resources and build whatever my brain can imagine. Um, yeah. Like I say, I, I understand them not implementing it yet, and I understand why they might not want it in the game yet in terms of, well, if we give them free reign to roam the open world and build whatever they want to build, are they going to want to play the game? I get that. But mm, sure. based on how in-depth and beautiful the the building system is if they really want to get their fans invested long term especially while it's in early access leading up to full release that would be the way to do it i think yes i, I would agree with that um i think it's definitely obviously they've not announced it but i i would imagine it's something that's definitely going to be on their radar yes um, i think i think it will be in there by by release even if you have to complete the game before you get access to it I'd like that. I would like that, actually. Um, but in the meantime, the one thing I would suggest to them is, at the very least, give me a world option that gives me even a relatively small flat plane, not the normal world, that gives me infinite resources so I can test build ideas out before I try and build them in my world. Ooh. I mean, I guess that is basically a creative mode, though, isn't it? I suppose it's even more of a creative mode than going into the full open world with creative, yeah. Yeah, you would imagine they'd give us one with the other. Um, yeah. When and if they do implement that. Um, but no, I agree. And I think especially with how well the building system has been received by players, um, it, ultimately it's going to be the thing that people continuously come back to the game for. It, it would eventually get tedious to have to constantly be crafting and collecting all these resources to build what you want to build especially like we've not really done any like big scale builds yet have we no we've done we've done small to medium scale i would say a lot of the time yeah but if we were to build like a, a massive castle for example um and people obviously have i, I don't want to think about how long it takes to collect all those resources yeah and i think you i think you could do it i think the frustrating part would be I think we'd need both of us and I think one of us would have to be doing the building and one of us would have to be getting the resources. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're collecting, like, stone and stuff, it's not difficult, so I'm not going to sit and complain about it. 
Um, and obviously everything respawns, you know, everything outside the radius of a flame altar respawns. So it's not that bad, like some games are definitely worse for it, but it just, it really, personally it takes me out of it when I, I plan this big build project and I'm like, I'm looking at my inventory and I'm like, yeah, okay, I've got, I've got so many materials, like I'm not going to run out. I get halfway through the build and I'm like, I'm out of stone. I have to go get more stone. Yeah, you know? it is frustrating. When you get into a flow of building and that gets interrupted, um, yep. especially when a big part of you wanting to play the game is 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 the creative aspect of building. I agree. I agree. It does, it does take you out of it a bit. Yeah, yeah. But to be fair, um, again, if it does come later on, potentially like early 2025 or whatever, I don't know. Uh, I don't think I would want to use it right now because the game hasn't been out long and I haven't experienced everything it has to offer uh i don't i don't think we've even experienced like two-thirds of the map to be honest i think there's a big chunk we've not seen yet yeah yeah and especially with all this i mean i'm looking at the roadmap now all this stuff that they're potentially well not potentially apparently bring in this year um i don't think i'd want to just go into a creative mode too often no, and that's yeah, that's why I say it. I I do absolutely understand them not implementing it yet, and I do understand them not wanting to yet. Um, I just definitely want them to be considering that in the next few years. I, I'd like to see it at least in the game by the time the full game releases. Oh yeah, definitely agree. So this one is it sort of relates to something that we saw in the roadmap itself though it wasn't explicitly stated um taming so actual full taming um and i don't mean just herding animals i mean like being able to have like one main animal companion um that follows you around you could have different animals that have different skills certain animals might be able to climb better or you know you might have a vulture that can fly uh you know different tamed animals would have different damage types and therefore would be better at fighting different kinds of enemies and stuff like that so a familiar essentially do you think Eff effectively yeah yeah so you'd summon them like a battle pet yeah whether you know whether, whether that's explicitly summoning them or whether it's having to find them in the world and tame them and then they're just with you unless you tell them to stay at your base or something like that yeah. I i'd like to see some kind of system of that vein yeah, that's a really cool idea. And obviously, um, they've mentioned in the roadmap, and it's inevitable that there's going to be a bunch of new enemy types. And I would imagine with that, they'd introduce a lot of like wild creatures and stuff, um, either hostile or non-hostile. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think we'd need a bigger variety of creatures in order for that to be a, an effective feature. Yes, yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And leading off from that too, what about mounts? mounts i would love to see even just having one kind of mount i.e a horse or horse-like creatures something to be able to get around the map quicker without using your glider um you know you could have horses maybe unicorns if you wanted to lean into the fantasy oh. aspect um just any animal that has a body somewhat like a horse i suppose horses i do have bodies i believe yeah I have heard that. I have heard yeah. that. I'm going to go in a different direction with that. Um, okay. I want to be able to tame... This is just one example. The big walking mushroom guys in the uh, the Revel Wood. Oh, that's I, a really interesting idea. Because they look like they have a really comfy back. They um, do, yeah. And, and I've tried to mount them myself. And to and no one's surprise... I just vibrated. To no one's surprise, it did not work. No. But if I could just climb, you know, get some reins and I'm sitting on this mushroom's back and he's going along and he's emitting all these spores and just killing everything around him, I would love that. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be a more fun way to go about it. Like, take the creatures that are already in there and figure out a way to implement that into a, into a mount system. Okay, so for me, I think this is the most important item that I've thought of. Um, Interesting. And it directly leads on from potentially the most important thing in the roadmap, which is water. Ah, okay. So it seems very obvious, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who's thought of it, but a fishing system. Yes. 
so they wouldn't need to go too too in depth with it i don't think you could potentially introduce to begin with say half a dozen kinds of fish you could potentially have different fish in different biomes that you can find mm. um obviously like in any like survival game or rpg right you catch them you cook them up whatever but something that could be interesting is obviously i think it's with the hunter you can craft uh, monster trophies yes so if you introduced a fisherman npc ah then amongst other things like he could provide you with like bait and stuff like that yeah yeah but you could also craft uh trophies like the monster trophies but with fish that you catch and yes potentially you could have uh different sizes of fish that you catch as well and you wouldn't have to go into like centimeters and shit like that but you could just have like small medium large and then you can craft different like trophies depending on the size of the fish that you caught uh and that i think that would be really cool because then you could build a little like fishing shack near the water with all your trophies in it yeah you know i think that'd be sick and i suppose to be fair sort of going along with the whole water concept and, and you obviously mentioned fishing it would it potentially leave a little bit of wiggle room to introduce boats and i'm not talking big ships oh. necessarily but like even just a small canoe to you know yeah or a fishing boat you know yeah paddle out into the middle of a lake sit there with your chums you know oh. drink a bit of grog play your instruments yeah. play your instruments let's, yeah look, let's just turn the game into sea of thieves yes yeah that's what we're asking for <laughs> yeah that's Dad, all we want we want sea of thieves no <laughs> we don't we want enshrouded in its purest form exactly but also um, fish yes um but you also mentioned the uh the the fisherman npc um and the ability to potentially uh you know craft these fishing trophies and maybe sell the fish to them the bigger the fish the bigger the price mm. and that sort of leads me on to talk about merchants um in general so i think ah. we obviously have this uh rune system the runes are the closest thing we have to a currency in the game um i think you could build on that by introducing general merchants so one thing that you and i have noticed as we've been playing the game is you can break down your old weapons into runes mm -hmm. but your old armor you either just delete or you just pop it in a chest just to sort of sit there mm -hmm. i think having merchants would allow you to sell your old armors for a start another source of runes um you know there's all sorts of other things you could you could add to be able to be bought from them or sell to them um it just adds another layer to to the system of 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 the grind of the game if that makes sense i think you could have like traveling merchants oh um, that's a really good idea who don't have like a set location it's just you if you happen to like come across them then you can like sell off your stuff to them or like see see what wares they have you know yeah um and they could have uh, we'd have to have a think about what they could potentially stock i don't really know but well you could have uh, to be fair i mean this, this sort of leads me on to another thing i'd like to talk about to be fair um one thing they could have is and one thing i'd really like to see in the game is more interesting and unique weapons with specific abilities um mm. so you could have merchants with somewhat randomized inventories each time you find them um yeah. You know, you could have the, uh, you know, specific flame swords or, or something like that. The one thing I'd love to Ooh. see is weapons and armor with law explanations for the weapon itself. So you might have, you know, I don't know, Lord Frankleton's staff or know. something. Yeah, you know, the Lord of the of the Undercrest. Yep, that's the, the one. You know that place, that place yep. that we've definitely been to and definitely exists in the game. Yeah, yeah. But you get you get you get what I'm trying to say. You know, having more unique and interesting weapons, both visually and mechanically, um, that have maybe their own descriptions when you look at them in in your inventory. This was the the tainted sword of of the fell ghastly uh, Bumbaclart or something like that. Um, <laughs> I did not <laughs> expect that to come out. <laughs> I wasn't ready. Oh. Um, something like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that that's a cool idea. And you could also have that. 
you could buy like treasure maps from them for that's example. a really good idea we have our pickaxes you could have procedurally placed chests yep. with interesting loot in them and again that sort of relates to um one thing we did see in the uh in the roadmap which was um what was it was it like npc quests we were talking about the townsfolk npcs and whether they might be the people to uh give you the replayable world quests yep. that could be something like it they could they could give you whether it's a treasure map you get from a merchant or an npc that you talk to saying i've heard rumors mm -hmm. of yeah 20 20 clicks west of um <laughs> of this place you can find a chest with this cool thing in it um you know the merchants could also sell like armor dyes and stuff yes which is something we've talked about in the past as well honestly i think I, so i think dyes do exist in the game bit of a spoiler because again we haven't experienced everything yet but I, I think dyes do exist but i think it's for like furniture items right crafting certain like banners right things. okay yes that definitely makes sense yeah but say they made uh, they had like these wandering merchant npcs and that was the only way to obtain these dyes They'd have like a random color every time you find them. And you're like, damn, I need to like grab as much as I can because I don't know when I'm going to find this guy again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so keeping along the lines of uh, sort of combat and weaponry and stuff like that, I think this would allow the game to transcend what it currently is. I want the combat to be improved a little bit. And what I mean by that is, um, from my experience so far within the game, neither the role nor the magic dash have iframes if people don't know what iframes are though i'd imagine most people do if they're playing this kind of game um in dark souls games and like elden ring and stuff like that you have these things called invincibility frames uh the way they work is when you dodge an attack regardless of whether you are in the path of the attack if you dodge at the right moment you are invincible for a few frames of the game i.e no matter where you are or what you're doing if you dodge at the right time, you will not take damage. Um, I think that's something that really needs to be added to the game in order to make certainly melee combat especially flow and feel rewarding and, um, you know, just make it feel a little bit more comfortable. I could kind of see both sides of the coin with that, to be fair, because uh, people might think about that and think, well, it's not a Dark Souls game, right? The, the, the combat isn't necessarily the one of the major focal points of the game whereas in dark souls and uh, elden ring and stuff it obviously is like that's yes. the most important part of the game yeah um yeah i could kind of see it from both sides i do agree though and especially again it, i wish we knew more about these dungeons like this hollow halls dungeon yeah um the fact that that's the first item on the roadmap it, it must be quite significant and i would imagine quite challenging as well so so yeah i do agree with you to an extent it would be good if they I don't think they need to like revamp the combat system. I don't think it's bad by any means. No, not so. I no, I don't think it's. I think it just needs. I think iframes, in addition to the way the combat already feels, I think it would just allow it to to push it just above what it already is a little bit. Um. So again, sort of keeping along the lines of um combat and stuff like that. Again, sort of similar to uh, creative mode. I understand this feature that i'm about to talk about isn't necessarily what they're going for um but i would love to see some level of pvp option i'm not suggesting for a moment that you allow pvp within the world and you make it a prominent feature one thing i'd really like to see is some kind of placeable object sort of similar to a flame altar you know the center of the arena is the combat area and that's where the radius of the combat zone is you could yep. build seating all the way around it uh, for your friends to watch two people fighting. Uh, yeah, I would love to see that implemented at some point. Uh, yeah. Especially if they do expand on the combat system, like you mentioned. That would be really fun for, like, even for me and you, for example, just testing out different builds. I want to make a Colosseum now, bro. Yeah, sorry, mate. I probably shouldn't have said that. Damn. That's, I mean, hey, look, maybe you can, maybe you can start working on it and... Maybe in the future, wink, wink, devs, wink, wink. Um, they might implement that so that you can just place a flame altar-like structure within the middle of it and just be ready to go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm going to make this Colosseum so sick that they're going to see it and have no choice but to add it. I would call it something like a battle altar. Okay. I feel something it. Something like that. Yes. Give it like a blue flame or something. Make it a bit different. 
Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be interesting. That's a bit shroudy, actually, isn't it? Purple flame. Uh, purple flame. Pur yeah, I mean, I'm always down for a purple flame, my friend. Anything purple, <laughs> send it my way. There we go. Okay, so obviously, uh, new blocks, right? That, that That's an obvious one. We don't really need to touch on that. However, just quickly, one specific one that oh. I think myself and a lot of people would love to see added are the, like, the ancient spire blocks. Yes, sure. You know, the like the dark stone and the gold, like bronzy sort of trims on them. Yeah, yeah. That, when we first loaded into that game and I saw those, I was like, I cannot wait to to build with these blocks because they look so cool. And obviously they're not currently in the game. Mm. Um, but they look so good, man. And I'm not saying you should be able to break down the ancient spires. That wouldn't make sense. But... Um, allow us to like find the recipe as you do with most other blocks and then craft it with whatever it is like stone and bronze or whatever but yeah i i would love that and essentially make your own ancient spire type things maybe that's why they don't want people doing it because they're such specific uh structures in the game right maybe they yeah. don't want people replicating that but again even for potentially in a creative mode in the future i think that'd be really fun to build with you know what? I'd even accept it as an end game item once the game's released. Yeah, come on. Come that on. That'd be a really nice incentive to complete the game, uh, especially as a creative builder. Um, you complete the game and they go, here you go, have one of the coolest looking blocks in the entire game. Um, so one thing I saw suggested a few times, I think it was suggested in our previous video as well, is some kind of game chat. I don't think it's worth implementing a a voice chat into the game you know with especially considering we're pc only at the moment i think you know people have discord people know what discord is uh, there's no need for a for an in-game voice chat um if they do do that i think it should be proximity only um just mm. have that that option i think that would be an interesting way to play the game so that you know yeah. say say you and i are playing on the same map but we're just doing our own thing you know, having me, I'm working on a base and all of a sudden I just hear you going, hello, sunshine. I'll be like, oh, look, it's you. Um, little interactions like that, I think could be worth adding voice chat, but I think for the most part, it's unnecessary. But text chat, be it local or global, I think is definitely worth it. Yeah, for sure. Um, especially like you said, with the game being on PC, uh, it's kind of weird that there isn't any kind of text chat in the game currently. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'd definitely be worth it. Uh, the last one that I think is, again, a really interesting feature I'd like to see, and I think I've seen a lot of other people suggest this as well, base defense. Um, mm. You and I have talked about this a lot. Uh, having some system to cause waves of enemies, not even necessarily waves, but like hordes of enemies, like a group of X amount of enemies with maybe one boss attack, attack your settlements. Um, mm. I think would be really nice having some incentive where an alert comes up saying Woodguard is being attacked. You need to return there now. Oh. Um, I think that'd be really cool. It'd get your heart pumping. You'd be like, oh no, I need to get back. There'd be there'd need to be some kind of limits within that. I don't think they should be able to destroy your structures. Um, I don't think they should be able to necessarily kill NPCs unless NPCs mechanically are expendable. Okay. But if they can't destroy your base and they can't kill the NPCs, what's the point in the raids? Yeah, I think we'd I think we'd have to think about that a bit more. Um, hmm. I, I'd rather them not be able to destroy your base, but be able to kill NPCs, but not the essential NPCs. Yeah, I I'm really torn on this one. I have seen other people talk about it, and again with uh, Enshrouded being hyped as a survival game, like before it came out. I think people kind of expected that because, again, you compare it to games like um, Valheim, for example, right? Um, mm. And, like, for me recently, Grounded is one that I think... Uh, I don't think that was there in launch, but they added, like, base raids into it. Sure. Um, and they are really fun events because you get the... No you're, like, you're just happily just building in your base and then you get the notification, there's, like, a music change and you're like, oh, shit. And then there's a troll at your door, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then they come in, they swing in, and they do damage to your structures. Potentially, like we made um, when I was playing Valheim last, we made a big wall around around our like village, um, and one swing, and they'd broken through the wall. 
Oh. And so it was like, it, it was stressful. But it yeah. was fun at the same time. Um, mm. However, again, with Enshrouded seemingly headed in a more RPG-centric direction, I don't know if that's necessary to the game. And honestly, we've we've touched on how good the building mechanic is in the game. If they did implement that, and enemies were able to destroy your structures, I think I would be distraught. I, yeah, I'd be angry. Yeah, that absolutely. would stress me out no end, because more than I think any other like crafting game I've, I've played, I'm so proud of my builds once they're done, because they look so good. I don't want anyone coming in and spoiling that. No, I absolutely agree. I think in, in terms of base defense, I think it'd be really hard to figure out a way to make it work and it'd be satisfying. Um, Here's an idea real quick. So we're introducing like villagers and like townsfolk NPCs, right? Yeah. So let's say, obviously they can't be killed. That I think that'd be a bit much. But your base gets attacked by enshrouded guys, whatever. And they do destroy parts of your structure, like walls and obviously not like chests and stuff. That'd be... Nah, we don't need that. Yeah. Um, but they could potentially destroy like parts of your buildings and stuff like that. But instead of having to like remember how it all looked and rebuild it again, you essentially just you speak to like an NPC, like the blacksmith, for example, or someone, and they will start to rebuild the town. And maybe you have to pay them like runes or something, but they will start rebuilding it as it was. Yeah, sure. It sort of almost takes a a memory screenshot of what your build was before the raid. Yes. So that whatever state it's in post raid, you can you will get it back. Automatically build it back up. That's a really yeah. cool idea, actually. Yeah, so that's it, a really interesting idea. I didn't articulate that very well, but you you see where I'm going with it. Yeah. No, I think that could. That's definitely a way it could work. Um, you could essentially you could sorry you could have like a chest for example, and you've got all your townsfolk. You have to put loads of like. Uh, well, whatever the build was made out of, so if you had walls of stone, for example, you'd have to put a shitload of stone in the chest, and then the townsfolk will take the resources from the chest and build the stuff back up. It might take like a few days or whatever, but they will yeah. do it, so you don't really have to worry about it. Like, it, it would be a bit annoying in a way, because um, all your stuff would be broken down, but it, in you the, know in the you long run, back. you get it back. Yeah, I think yeah, that yeah, could yeah. potentially be quite good. Yeah, no, I think that's a really interesting idea. Um, I think one alternative way I think you could put it off is not allow for destructible uh, buildings in the raid, but have a happiness system within your NPCs. And the longer they are attacked or disturbed, their happiness goes down. And if their happiness goes down too much, they are not able to give you replayable world quests. So this is, this is what I mean. I think there's certainly different ways that you could get it to work. I think it would take a lot of thought, but there are clearly ways based on what we've just talked about that you could get it to work and it not be too much of a frustration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love The Sims, don't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about villager happiness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Magic wardrobes. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so the last thing I just wanted to mention, uh, just to sort of close off, like I say, it's something that is undoubtedly coming, but I think it makes sense to sort of end on this and just sort of touch on it briefly. Story expansions. Um, oh, yeah. To build on the story, keep that going. There's actually not a lot of lore information. There's a lot of books, um, but from my less than extensive research, the story is effectively, oh, man comes with elixir. People like elixir. <laughs> People go digging for elixir. Oh, no, shroud. Oh, people are dying. Let's hide in these urns so that one day a hero can save us. And that's basically the story so far. I don't know, man. I, I, yeah, I agree to an extent. I don't know if that's fair to say, though, because like you say, we we don't read any of the lore books. And like anyone listening to this who has been like extensively reading every book they come across are going to listen to us and be like, you don't know what I, you're talking I, about, man. There's so much I, lore. I will say I've done a bit more reading away from the game. Okay. Fair. Uh, so I've done a bit of research and you're you're absolutely right there is more detail but in terms of the big pivotal story moments in terms of understanding what's going yeah. on yeah um okay there's, yeah. The, there's the nitty-gritty in terms of oh where especially the NPCs that we craft with 
um we certainly hear about their stories and how they got from one place to another and how they ended up in the urns yeah um but in terms of the overarching storyline how i stated it is pretty much the way it goes okay so do we think mostly the lore books relate to just like the side quests and like pointing you in the direction of certain treasure and things like that yeah they point you in the direction of of items and things like that and they give a bit of backstory into our main npc characters okay fair uh, I, I want to see some some real villains um yeah going. yeah well, i like... want to see a real visceral villain for sure yeah like the Wisp Wyvern, I think you said earlier that that's the like final boss so far in the early access. I don't think it is. I think there's one more after it. I think there's one other boss, but in terms of story-wise, in terms of the direction that the devs want us to go as we're playing the early access, I think the Pike and the Wisp Wyvern is the story, the main story boss at the moment. Okay, fair. Yeah, because you you to my knowledge again i've not been reading the books but to my knowledge you don't learn anything about like the uh the capital or the castle or the wyvern before getting there particularly no, there's a, like i there's think a, the blacksmith touches on it but yeah there's a few bits of information about um the pike before it all went to pot yeah. um and the king of the pike um i think you know the main takeaway from that is that the king was a very sort of lazy complacent uh leader uh yeah. who didn't do much to try and stop the spread of the shroud um but no there's there's not loads of story information in general and um you know i i'd just like to see a lot more and, and look i think they probably have a whole story planned out i think you know i i sort of laid it out to you i compared it as i often do to elden ring I think boss wise, I think the Wisp Wyvern is Margit from Elden Ring. I think it's the first main boss. Mm -hmm. um, in, in early access, it's obviously the the only main boss, but I think by the time the game is fully released, I think it will be that will be the start of of the journey, effectively. Oh, I'm so excited, man! I'm so it's excited. excited I love this roadmap. I know um, some people will look at it and be like, "Okay, 2024, like." whatever but as people like us we just see it and we're thinking about all these things and it doesn't matter when they come just mm. just the fact that we know they are going to be implemented at some point is exciting enough yeah it's exciting times i think we've both definitely fallen in love with the game you know as much as some people may say oh sure we've got all these things but we don't know when they're coming but the devs have gone out of their way within months of launch to make it clear that they have a plan and I think that is vastly, vastly more than 99% of games developers do nowadays. Yeah. And I think regardless of whether you think, oh yeah, sure, well, I'll believe it when I see it, have respect and appreciate the devs for communicating with us because not many do. Exactly. Um, I mean, I'm in their uh, Discord server too. And they're constantly posting like community posts and little TikToks and things like that. And, you know, they clearly very much care about the growth of the game. They care about their community. And it's really good to see. Because you, do, you don't get that often nowadays. You really don't. Okay, so I think... Uh, is that going to wrap it up? Do we have any more items? Or are we... Are I we think good? that's it. Um, I don't even know how many topics. It's probably a good 15, 20 topics that we've touched on there. So, yes. <laughs> you know, as if they didn't announce enough. No, we want more. We have to have more, don't we, Sean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's fun to think about. Again, I would imagine they'll implement a few of the things that we've touched on. Not all of them necessarily, but it's um, it's exciting times. I'm looking forward to see where they go with the game. Uh, so thank you for watching. Uh, we appreciate you guys hopping in and listening to us ramble for a while. Um, you know, I know it's been somewhat nonsensical, but we made that roadmap video and we really enjoyed discussing uh, the things that are coming. And we had all these ideas that we wanted to... Uh, get out to you guys and see what you guys think so if you if you have any opinions on what we've talked about if you have any ideas that we haven't talked about that you think are worth talking about let us know um we're very active in our comment sections we really enjoy uh, responding to you guys and seeing what you guys think and and bouncing ideas back and forth so uh definitely let us know and 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 talk to us see you next time